Now, we've been writing genetic code for quite a while. Back in the early 1970s, we discovered that there were enzymes that could chop genetic code at precise places, molecular scissors, and we had molecular glue, and we started doing a little bit of molecular scrapbooking, and that's how we did genetic engineering. We literally did cut and paste. It was powerful, and it was important, and it got the covers of a lot of magazines like this. It really started to wake people up to the power and potential of this. And today, if you look around a molecular biology lab, you'll see something that looks very much like this. And we still work in very much the same way as in the early 1970s. It's complicated technical cooking. We're good at it. If you're, really, if you're well funded, you'll end up getting a robot. Usually, you'll have grad students because they cost a lot less. Synthetic biology is basically founded on this idea that if you can write DNA, you're no longer limited to your application development, and you're no longer tied to that bench. These are some examples of older DNA printers. They're getting a lot better. They're still not great. There's companies that will go out and manufacture any DNA code that you want. Just email it to them, send them your credit card number, they will give it to you. It's making all the old equipment junk. You can buy this on eBay. It's just no one's bidding on it. Trust me, it's a doorstop. But we still haven't seen the paradigm shift breakthrough in the technology, the stuff that will really make it cheap and really promote a lot of application development. And I figure it'll come pretty much when we hit this, this point, when you can get 10 million base pairs in an hour for 100 bucks or less. Why? because this will allow you to genetically engineer virtually any organism. It'll allow you to build any bacteria or virus from scratch for essentially nothing. Once we hit this point, the application space completely explodes. But, of course, we're going to ramp up to that pretty quickly. On the software side, we're seeing better and better editors. Just you know, they're for, the companies will let you use it if you buy their DNA. We're also starting to see the development of a true genetic programming language where we can start using modularized parts, where you can start linking these things together and modeling what's going to happen and doing your debugging kind of online. From the abstract of that last paper, there's this quote, an ultimate dream is to design, press a button and have the design translated to DNA sequences that can be synthesized and put to work in living cells. Really, that's probably one of the best summaries of synthetic biology around. It's push button biology. What do you mean by your design? Um, anything you can dream of, you can model and create in a living organism and have a fairly good, on a first pass, a good expectation that it'll work. So if, if, if you treat the design as a model and DNA sequence as a programming language, it is fairly possible already now? Yes, but only with a very, very simple. Right now, the comment is you can do this today, but the applications are still very simple. Yes, we need to work up several orders of magnitude.